Welcome. In a previous video I went over a couple different options to capture composite video. And I'll put a link in the description of that video. And in that video I found the best combination for capturing composite video was to use this HDMI to composite adapter. I should say composite to HDMI adapter. So you input composite and stereo audio and you output HDMI. And then I combined this with an HD game capture by Elgato. But the Elgato is very expensive. It was I think 160 bucks or so. So now I have this cheap adapter I got from eBay, and this was under $20. So I found you can do the same thing by combining these two things together. So I just want to mention, I have this other adapter. This was pretty cheap, and this is for composite to USB. And this worked best on Windows. It didn't work very well on Mac or Linux, at least in my experience. This actually does have S-Video too, but it didn't work great. This is cheap, but if you have Windows, you could use this. This has a better quality than this, so I'll set that aside. So I'll go through the components here. I'll start with the camera. So this would be like the VCR. I'm using it like a VCR right now. I have a tape in here. Funny thing, this is a, I got this in I think 97 or 98 and it was eight, It was $750, super expensive. It doesn't even have a fold out screen on it. It's a high eight camera, but that has composite and stereo out. So I have that plugged in. And that is going over here to this HDMI to composite adapter. So we're inputting those three signals, we're outputting HDMI. And this has a switch on it to go from 720p to 1080p. And this requires power. So this has a USB cord on it, but this doesn't talk to your computer. This is just for power. So you could plug this into a power brick. And we have the output of that HDMI going through a HDMI cable to the input device here. So I'll put a link in the description of these here. I got this on eBay. I think there's some on Amazon that are similar. So if I find those, I'll put a link to those too. And I got this on Amazon. I forget the exact cost, but it's a pretty cheap setup to do this. And it's also versatile. So if you have say an old NES, you could use this to play it on your HDMI display. And this you could use to capture HDMI display. So these components are kind of nice on their own too. So I have this all set up. This is turned on. I'll plug this into my Mac and I'll probably plug this into my Mac too. So it has power. And then I'll walk through the capture procedure. Okay, so I'm on my Mac here and I have QuickTime Player open and I want to go to File and then say New Movie Recording. And I'll go down here to this little drop down next to the record button and I'll make sure I choose USB Video and USB Digital Audio. This says number two, it might just say USB Video. And then I'll scroll down and for quality I'll just say High. So in a previous video I did some testing on this and high gives you 720p by 60 fps and maximum gives you 1080p by 25 fps. So the composite to HDMI adapter I'm using is sending a 720p signal so I really need to just record the 720p. And we're going to downsample that later anyway. So I'll choose high so I have all the settings. I can hit record here and then I'll hit play on my recorder and it should start playing here. Okay, so we have the video going. Okay, that's enough. I'll hit stop. I'll hit stop on my player too. So now I have it open in QuickTime. I'll hit play. And it will come up here in just a minute. There we go. So what I have here is a 720p by 60 FPS video. I'll save it out. So I'll go up here to file and save. And if you close it, it'll ask you if you want to save it also. So you can keep that video as is here, but it's at a 16 by nine ratio. And if you're recording off a of VCR, an old video camera, that would be a four by three ratio. So I want to shrink this down a little bit. So to do that, I'm going to use FFmpeg. So I'll link to my FFmpeg page down below, and on that page it has links to how to install it on a Mac. And I'll also put a link to the instructions I'm using in this video. So I have some notes, I'll pull those up here. And it'll open up a terminal. And I'm on the desktop, so I'll type CD desktop. I can type FF probe, and then video original move. And we can see here the specs on it. So we have 59.91 FPS. It's 1280 by 720, and then the audio is 48,000 hertz mono. I'll clear my screen here. So for the first example, I just want to change the aspect ratio of it, and we can do that without re-encoding. So I can type FFmpeg space dash I space, the name of the video, dash aspect space four colon three, 
And then I have V codec copy. Actually, I can just say codec copy because that'll do the audio and the video. So we don't re-encode the audio. And then I'll type the output. I'll say video for three dot, and I can do MP4 or move. I'll do MP4. That's more standard. Okay. So that was very quick. This was a short video, but this should be quick anyway. So now I'll open it and it'll be four by three ratio. I'll open the original at the same time. So we can watch both. Okay, so you see her head is not widened out as much. So this is stretched. So that's to fix the ratio and that leaves it the same. So let's take a quick look at the size of those files. My typing is not working so good today. Those are both 37 megabytes. So they're the same size. And actually, I think if we look at it like this, yeah, they're very, very similar in size. Okay. So since this video was captured from composite, we don't really need to save it as 720p because there's not that much detail there. So we can re-encode it. So that's this next line here. I'll just copy this in and I'll change it to work with these files. So I'll go to the beginning of my line here. If you're not savvy on the terminal, you can start typing what you want to type. So I want video here. I'll start typing up VI, I'll hit tab, and it'll start completing it for me. So now I'll type O, and it writes the whole file name out. So I'll go to the end here, and I'll change this to video for three code. Okay. So here we're changing the aspect ratio to four three, the frame rate to 30, and we're scaling it to 640 by 480. I'm using the video codec H264 underscore video toolbox, and that's hardware encoding on the Mac. The bit rate is at 700K. Then I do dash size here, 640 by 480. And I played around with these settings quite a bit, and it works having both of these on here. I don't know if you can remove one or the other, but I'm just going to keep it as is. Pix format here makes it work on QuickTime. And then we have the name of the file. So I'll hit enter here. Now this is going to re-encode, but this is a short clip. It should happen pretty quick. If you see on the end here, it says 412X. So it's going four times faster than the video would normally play. So here's the file. I'll play it. And here we go. And here's the one where we change the aspect ratio. So this is a larger image. but we don't have any more detail there. And I can show that by just enlarging this. So there's not really any more detail on the left or, the, or on the right than the left, really. So I'll clear my screen. So another option you may want to do is this last one here. And this is where we pad it out. So the problem with this video let's see on here if we do full screen so if i'm playing this if i'm playing it in quicktime and i make it full screen there will be black bars on the right and left but if you put this into some tvs it will actually stretch it so it uh, stretches to the sides of the tv and you may not want that so you can always make one video and test it on your system like if you're plugging this into a playstation or something where you're going to view these videos and test it but if it stretches it and you don't want it stretched, you can add some black padding to the sides. So that's the last command here. I'll copy that over. Oh, I forgot to talk about the command here. So this is similar to the last one, but we have this pad here. And this is going to make it 854 by 480. And I looked up a number of different sizes that you could use here because you want something that's 16 by nine. And this is close to 16 by nine, but I don't think it is exactly. But I found somewhere that said, this is what YouTube uses when they scale a video up. So I thought that could be a good solution here. So we have that here, we're padding it, to, we're scaling it to 640 by 480, but we're padding it here. And we're padding means we're making it black in this big, we have 854 by 480. And then 107 by zero is where we're starting the video. So if this 107 just said zero, the video would be on the left and you'd have all black on the right. 
we want our video centered in it. So that's what this does here, this 107 colon zero. And then we have the size is 854 by 480, and the rest of it's the same. So we'll look at that video. And here we have the padding on the side. Now QuickTime enlarged it properly anyway, but this will also work. So this will work if you put this on a thumb drive and plug it into a TV, you can watch this in the proper aspect ratio. So these are the basic things you can do. You can use sharpening filters, deinterlacers. I mean, there are all sorts of different filters and video things you can do with FFmpeg. You could also just pull this right into some editing software. But if you're taking a collection of old VHS tapes and you're converting them over to digital, you may just want to import them all and run a couple filters on them and call it a day. If you're just converting over, say, one video and it's an old wedding video, you, maybe you can spend hours tweaking it and making it really good. But these are some simple things you can do. So I want to also check the size here so we can look at that. So we had the original was 37 megabytes. We changed the aspect ratio and we made it 37 megabytes. When we re-encoded it, we got it down to 2.7 megabytes. And when we added the padding on, it was still 2.7 megabytes. So those black bars there don't take a lot of extra space in the file. It's very easy for the system to encode those and not take up any space. So it really makes sense to re-encode these because it makes the files a lot smaller and you're not really losing any quality. So I'm going to close this video out and I'll add this video 43 pad at the end of this video. When you watch it on YouTube, it will have been re-encoded by YouTube. There's no point in putting all these on there because you won't really be able to tell the difference because YouTube will have done the same processing to all of them. So that's all for this video. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments. If you like this video, please click like. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, I'd appreciate if you could do that. And thanks for watching. Until next time, goodbye. But some of you were getting very hungry. <laughs> so may I now say thank you for the honor you do me in presenting me with the Reagan Medal. I think it was one of the great advantages of fate, if they come sometimes. Ronald Reagan was president in the United States. Well, I was prime.